Welcome to my video presentation for my USC CSEI 548 class project on knowledge graph embedding. I'm going to explore the complex model, which is complex embeddings for simple link prediction, a paper on knowledge graph embeddings. I refactored an original code base that appeared on GitHub. The link is here. Knowledge graphs typically contain only a small subset of all possible facts. This necessitates filling in the missing information, i.e. link prediction or knowledge graph completion. The task is to develop a model that can be used to predict new links or complete missing links in the given KG. Complex is one such model. To train the model, we will need a list of subject, relation, object, triples. We also need a list of the relations and entities. For output, the model will output the learned embeddings from the entities and relations. Typical KG embedding models learn embeddings to optimize a score function, i.e. RESCAL. Each entity is represented by a vector embedding of m dimensions, each relation embedding represented by an m by m matrix, which can also be diagonalized so it's only an m. Models utilize varying score and loss functions and training methods. Negative training samples need to be introduced. To calculate the benchmark metrics, we take a subject and relation from a triple in the test data set. We score all entities against test subject and test relation, then rank the entities by score using the model score function and learned embeddings. We do the same reversing subject and ob object. We can then calculate the mean reciprocal rank and the hits at K, which is the percentage of correct answers in top K rankings. Complex built on previous bilinear models such as Rescal and Dismult. The difference between complex and these other models is that subject and object entity embeddings for the same entity are no longer equivalent, but complex conjugates. This introduces asymmetry into the model. Complex performed well versus other models and represents state-of-the-art performance. We are now going to move on and look at how the Python notebook works for this code base. Welcome to the video demonstration of the Jupyter Notebook for the Complex Graph Embeddings Project for CSCI 548. The first cell in the notebook just sets up the imports, as well as the hard coding for the file systems. Next, we must read the data set. This must be done before executing and learning embeddings. Here I have emitted valid and whole to speed up the process. Once we've done reading the data, we can actually go and learn the embeddings. This should take several minutes per epoch if using time minimizing hyperparameters. The parameters can be set here manually or left blank, and it'll assume a default value. Since this process takes a few minutes, we're going to pause and come back to this in a few more minutes. Now that the model has learned the embeddings, we can move on to other tasks. One other thing you may want to do is save the model for use later on, especially since it can take days to train using hyperparameters that maximizes the benchmark metrics. Next, we'll actually load the model. This is optional as well, but we'll put it into a new variable. And then we're going to add some test data. So this test data will allow us to test some of the functionality of the model. The test data comprises of subjects, relations, and objects. Next, we're going to print the actual embeddings for the subject and the relations and the objects. As you can see, this comes out as a vector. So in this particular instance, using a dimension of 40, we'll have 40 items in this vector, so a rank of 40. Next we'll get the scoring matrix. The scoring matrix is a vector for each subject relation and it matches the score which, with all of the entities in the database. So in this case that's 14,951 columns in the vector and each one will be the score against that subject and relation and you can use those scores to find you know, for instance, the top scoring in a list. Next, we'll look at the evaluation of the train model using benchmark metrics. I'm going to use filtered evaluation. Since this takes a little while, we're going to put this on pause and come back. Okay, we're back and the evaluation has finished running. And as you can see, it's got all the metrics that you'd want for a model like this. It's at some number K, both filtered and raw, as well as mean reciprocal rank. 
you notice the numbers are not very good. Um, that's because we didn't train our model very long, but if you kick up the dimensions a little bit, you'll improve the performance dramatically. Thank you for listening to my video presentation.